Okay, I'm Coach Maddie, and this is Coach May Shin, and today we're having a partners clinic on how to communicate, how to play together, and there's a lot involved here. So we're going to go over a little scenario. We just met, we're ready to play, and one of us has to start the conversation. So I'm going to say, hi, May Shin, Coach Maddie, nice to meet you. Um, before we start playing, I'd like to go over a few things so that we can understand who takes the middle ball, who has a stronger forehand in our opinions, who has a stronger backhand, who's gonna be where at what time. Um, I've played with plenty of people coming up in the pickleball world and I was at the line, one inch from the line, and they were all the way back here. And unfortunately, could you show what you being at the line means? And this person was back here and this big hole was open up for anybody up there to put a ball right down the middle of us. And my feet are exposed back there. My angles are completely open. And she's right at the line where she should be. So here's the conversation as we get on the court. So we just introduced ourselves. And would you like me to make the calls or do you want to make the calls? You'll make the calls. Okay. And what I mean by the calls are not in or out calls because that's going to matter on where you are and who's actually hitting the ball and who's actually watching it. This is the call on mine or yours. And keep it simple, mine or yours works, not you got it, I got it. Once you get the three words, the person that's saying it usually has a mistake. It's, it's very hard to concentrate and talk at the same time. So she's picked me as the captain. So number one, pick a captain at the start of a game. I'm gonna say mine or yours the whole game. I don't care if she's right here and the ball's coming here, I'm saying yours. And we do that when we play all the time. So if, she, if we had two captains and we don't talk at the start of the game, what's going to happen is she's going to say yours and I'm going to say yours and neither one of us are going to move or we're going to run into each other or she's going to say mine, I'm going to say mine, we're going to hit each other. So pick one person to make all the calls. Um, when we're up at the line, we want to be one inch from the line together and you're here up here. And what we want to talk about here is how far do I take over, you can come up a little closer because otherwise you won't be able to hear us. How far do I take over here since I have a forehand to the middle and my wife has a forehand because she's a right-hander. Um, she's got a backhand in the middle. So we would talk about that. Do you feel comfortable in taking your half of the court and me taking my half of the court? Or do you want me to get more aggressive and take 18 to 24 inches over because I pose a threat by doing this. Every time I do this motion, when the ball's, before the ball's coming over, and I do this, ready to get this, it causes them to watch me, and unfortunately, if, if she's right here, I can't do it. She's, come on over here for a second. If she's stepping right here, I'm scared because I don't want to hit her, and I don't want to hurt her, so that's going to cause a lot of confusion, and confusion is not good. That's why you should be hitting down the middle 80% of the time, causing confusion. But as you notice, Mei Shin stands over here, because she's trying to cover that shot that comes off through her right shoulder. She wants to make sure she can handle this because she knows that I'm handling all the way up to here. And it's the same thing when you're over there. I'm not standing here in her way. I'm over here giving her all that freedom and I'm handling the shot that comes over here if they hit it. So we talk about that. We talk about who's gonna take the third shot. If you think my third shot's better, do you want me to take 80% of the third shots? Okay. If hers is better, I want her to take most of the third shots also because if she can place a ball anywhere she wants on the third shot to get us up the line, which is where you want to be, then of course I would want the stronger person or the person that can hit that shot better right up here at the line with me because they did such a great shot we could buy time to get to the line. What else would you like? Anything else you'd like to talk about? Partner communication? No? No? Okay. So, so the middle really matters. Um, the biggest thing we see is probably 95% of players don't know what to do as far as the third shot. So if my wife and I are back here and I get a third shot, most people say, well, do I run up if the ball comes to you? Do I run up to that line and take and close down half the court or do I stay with you? Well. If 95% of people can't put a third shot in there, you should stay together, move up, switch step, slow it down, and get back up to the line together as a moving team. Because as you can see, we're not giving you many angles by moving together. With her moving all the way up, you all the way up, and me here doing that third shot, I'm going to angle, and what if I can place that third shot, 
and I can get up there, then I've stopped that angle from happening anyway. So these are things you have to know. If you have a partner that can do a third shot 95% of the time, you want them to hit that ball. And now both of you, she's already up at the line because she knows I can do it. So she runs right up and she closes half the court down. And now I have the job of hitting the fifth shot if I didn't do a great third shot and then getting up to this line because 80% of the points are won with the first two people up at this line. Thank you.